welcome back to another video. Ooh, she just sounds, she purrs like a cat, this Peugeot, she really does. We didn't check that the boot jump that we bought for the Citroen Berlingo actually fits inside this vehicle. Now I'm pretty sure that it should do. In fact, I think these vehicles are kind of almost the same. Obviously this is a different generation to the Berlingo that we had, but it should fit. But in today's video, let's head down to our usual location I'll set up the boot jump and then we can have a closer tour of this Peugeot so I can sort of show you a few reasons why I absolutely love this vehicle for our micro camper. So what I'll do in today's video is give you a demonstration of the boot jump that we bought originally for our Citroen Berlingo, but now we've got this Peugeot Partner TP, and I just want to make sure firstly that the boot jump fits okay in this new vehicle. So let's go ahead and set it up and see what it looks like. The boot jump itself does fit perfectly in the back of this TP under our boot cover and we can keep it in here full time we don't need to keep taking it in and out whenever we go camping just so that i can show you how stealthy the boot jump looks you see we've got this cover here that goes over the back but also these back windows are tinted as well so nobody can see in nobody will be able to tell that we've got this boot jump underneath here i have put a couple of the cushions here and a blanket over the top because I, I noticed more in the Berlingo actually that it rattled about in the back but I don't even seem to notice it in this vehicle I have to be honest but let's go ahead and put the boot jump in its first position And I won't go through in great detail about the actual boot jump. I've done that on a previous video, but I'll quickly just run you through how it works. Let me just get these cushions out. Take out the fridge. So this is what it looks like when it's in our boot. And you can see the difference already between this and the Berlingo is that we have got some space either side of the boot jump here. In the Berlingo, it was really tight, and when I mean tight, I had to press it in. There wasn't any wiggle room whatsoever. We've got a bit of extra space, I think, in this TP, which really helps when you're trying to sort of just manoeuvre it around a little bit to set it up properly. And this bit folds up and out and over. So let me open the back doors, put the seats down, and I'll show you how that looks like. Take these out. Now the first thing I'll do is just move the driver and the passenger seat all the way forward. Really easy to just lower the seats. Look at that, just lift the lever. The seats just flip down on their own. The only thing I would say about the driver's seat is I won't take it all the way flat because otherwise it doesn't budge up to the steering wheel. Let's open this door so we can get a better view. Honestly, look at the space that you've got here now. Got little cubby holes here. Side. Perfect. Now, if I can just show you something in here. The boot jump has got these two little brackets at the back where you can keep this here, which is actually the table stand. And we can use this to set up the table, which we'll do in a moment. It's a nice little addition to the boot jump, just having those brackets there where you can push this in and keep this safe. So I just want to show you from a couple of angles before I set it up so you can really see how it works. So it flips out to there. You've got a hinge running along the bottom there. This flat bit comes up here and then you basically push this out like that. The little knack I've just discovered is doing it from the back is way better than trying to pull it, just pushing it down so you can stop it from slamming against the bottom. This is what it looks like after I've just pushed that down. You see how this 
is on this hinge here. And if I just open this out, it folds over. I don't know if you can see, it folds over like so. And just sits like that. And that is almost in its perfect bed position. But remember what I was saying earlier about having that little bit of wiggle room just to tidy it up. Well, it needs to come forward a little bit. There's still plenty of room before the boot catch though. Unlike the Bolingo where it was right up to the boot catch and often it didn't close properly. And just shift it forward a little bit. It just allows the front bits to come down properly onto the floor. Let me show you. Then become the feet for the top of the bed. I'll just put the cushions in so you can see the finished article, but it looks like it fits perfectly. And in actual fact, it doesn't just fit perfectly, it fits better than perfect because we've got a bit of extra room to wiggle around on it. So let's just get the cushion set up so you can see it in all its glory. And there you go. That's the bed in its simplest form. It didn't take me more than five minutes to set that up. It really is comfortable. It's proper sturdy and it gives us loads of space as well. And I could have a quick kip here, but better move on. I think in my mind, it will be set up in the bed position most of the time because we're gonna have an awning that we're gonna put on the side and that'll probably be the seating area, but we'll put it in the seating position because I wanna show you something, come on. This is ingenious, <laughs> look at this. I think I've shown you this before, but I don't know why, everything just feels better in this vehicle. And I keep calling it a vehicle, which is quite formal, isn't it really? And Amy's Beryl, let's call her Beryl. Right, so remember I took this out earlier. So this just goes in here, and then you slot the table into there, like so. Let me get in this seating area because there's some fundamental thing that's better about Beryl 2.0. Citroen Multispace, there was an overhead storage bin here. In Beryl 2.0 we haven't got that and guess what? I can actually sit upright, which means I can sit here if I ever want to, although I'm not certain how often I'd do it, but if it was really cold or something outside I guess we could utilize this position. They've put the bracket down there in this position for the pole, but to be honest with you, I think I prefer it in the middle so I can put a leg either side, because otherwise I'm sitting a little bit like this when I probably prefer to have my legs opened out a little bit and have the pole going through the middle. Although saying that, that will make it difficult to get in and out. I'm not too sure. One thing I forgot was to put the additional cushions that we've got here. Look at that! <laughs> Can't believe it! This, this really is ingenious. So I guess there's three reasons why this Peugeot is better than the Citroen Bolingo that we had. Firstly, you've got way more wiggle room to mess about with the boot jump just to make sure that it's set up properly rather than it being a real tight fit and a tight squeeze. The second thing is it's got the perfect headroom so that we can now sit inside the van. And there's one more thing that I want to show you now, which honestly, <laughs> look at this. Look at this. Brilliant advantages to having this back bit open that I can think of. Sarah could pass me my dinner through here, I guess. You know, like a like a serving station. Bell 2.0 is absolutely perfect for what we need. In fact, it's even better. When I had the Bilingo before, I was kind of happy with it. We'd spent a lot of money doing it up, but this is just literally ready to go. And now quickly I'll just put the boot jump back into its normal position, hidden away so that we're ready to drive off. See what I mean about having that little bit of extra wiggle room? Because you just get caught on some of the side bits of the vehicle when you're trying to open and close it. It's not a big issue, but it just helps to have that little extra room.
Boot down. All done. And there you have it, that's the boot jump, set up and put away. Fits absolutely perfect in barrel. I think I gave you a tour inside the van in detail in the last video, let me show you. So if I just show you from the passenger side, you've got a little cup holder here, you've got more storage down there on the door. Here you've got more storage up here, airbag there, a glove box that's got loads of different bits of storage. If anybody knows what that is, can they please leave a comment below because I'm toying with the idea of upgrading the stereo but I'm not sure whether to upgrade it or just get a Bluetooth transmitter with a phone holder. Up here you've got a display here which has got... What the? Didn't know that comes off. Didn't know that comes off like that. Maybe it's meant to. Not sure if that's meant to come up like that. Anyway, well it does. But yes, you've got a display there where you've got your radio clock and everything. That's the stereo CD player. Got a space there. And that's where I would potentially put a doubled in Apple Play car stereo. But I don't know whether to spend my money or whether to save it and just get myself a Bluetooth transmitter and then put my phone up here. I'm not sure. Some of that depends on what that is down there as well. Don't know whether that's linked. Down here you've got more storage. What well, looks like a little hook there. You've got so much room between this seat and the driver's seat. Loads of space down there to store stuff. You've got a 12 volt socket there. And then up here you've got even more storage similar to the Bolingo but not quite as big the Bolingo one went all the way over into the back seats of the car this one's quite short but still great extra room to store a few things so here on the driver's side pretty straightforward really nothing much to tell you about these holes here where you can store more stuff I've just noticed a little button there with P on it Drop me a comment if you know what that is. Is it parking? Maybe, I'm not sure. And then if I just give you another tour around the outside of the vehicle, I thought these were alloys, but they're not. They're discs, but they do look like alloys from a distance. Tires look great. No rust or anything on it whatsoever. And from a distance, she looks an absolute beauty. I've just purchased an awning which either fits on the side or the back of this micro camper. So in the next video, what I'll do is I'll do an unboxing of the awning and a setting up of the awning for the first time. Just want to make sure everything's there and I know what I'm doing before we go out on our first micro adventure, which is going to be in early April. But yeah, the birds are tweeting behind me, the sun's shining, it's blue skies and we're almost there and we're almost ready. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>